go. All righty. Uh, five things. Point number one, Janet Yellen accidentally destroys the narrative on inflation. Oh, no. Yes. So uh, Janet Yellen is currently our Treasury Secretary. Before that, she was the, the chairperson of the Federal Reserve, uh, where she famously said uh, that her biggest regret as chair of the Federal Reserve was not creating more inflation. So, I, you know, I know we were joking before, no one comment, but let me ask everyone who's listening to this, here's my question for you. We've had lots of inflation the last couple of years. Are you enjoying that? Has that made your life better? Are you happier? Do you feel like we have a better economy? It, are your finances at home better? Because we have lots of inflation, because that's what this person wanted for us. Her biggest regret was not creating more inflation. She wanted this. And so, you know, just a reminder, the inflation that we have right now, this was not an accident. This was planned by people and was done intentionally. So this week, Yellen, who has been a horrendous Treasury Secretary and was a horrendous chair of the Federal Reserve, came out and said in public, we don't have to get the prices down because wages are going up. And so to me, like, is the most remarkable thing about this, the fact that Yellen is either insensitive and economically illiterate or that she said this in public, right? right? So in terms of like insensitive and economically illiterate, yeah, great. You know, so people got raises and they have to pay more for things. But for most people, yeah, a lot of people have gotten raises uh, and they're making more money, but their purchasing power has gone down by more. And so- right. You could have gotten a raise, but be worse off. Your your higher salary may be buying you less than your lower salary did a couple of years ago. Also, what about people, retirees, people living on a fixed income, right? I mean, the, those people are feeling a ton of pain right now because everything's gotten a lot more expensive. The other thing, Rob, that I think is really important on this is... Our government has been trying to tell us, our Treasury Department, the White House, the Federal Reserve, they keep making excuses. They've told us incorrectly that inflation was due to supply chain problems or it was due to Vladimir Putin. Okay, well, great. Well, you know, Putin invaded Ukraine at this point almost two years ago and oil prices have come down and we still have inflation. But this is the key point here. If the issue had been supply chain, right, during COVID, once that normalized and the price for shipping came down and people were able to get parts, then prices would have come down. But they didn't go down. Prices have continued to rise. They've just continued to rise more slowly than before. And one of the things we've talked about a lot on this channel is the difference between disinflation and deflation. Deflation is a reduction in prices. And if the issue had been um, supply chain, then when that normalized, we would have seen deflation, a reduction in prices. But that's not what happened, right? What we've gotten is disinflation, which is a continuing increase in prices. It's just prices have gone up at a slower rate than they did before. So what, what has really caused all this inflation was a massive increase in the money supply, right? Our government handed out stimmies to everyone. And if you got a check, great. Yeah, it was really fun to get a $1,000 check, a $1,600 check, an $800 check in the mail. Great, free money. Well, guess what? You're all paying for your stimmies right now through higher prices. And for the vast majority of families, your expenses, your annual expenses have gone up by more than the amount of money that you were given. Yellen is wrong on this. She is insensitive on this. And to say we don't need lower prices because people are making more money is is really it's saying the quiet part out loud. And it's it's basically a tacit admission that the cause of inflation, the, the things that the Federal Reserve, the Treasury and the White House are blaming for inflation are not the real issue. What a motivation, right? I mean, what would even motivate her or, or what would even be the reason to come out and say something so insensitive one for sure, but just blatantly false and wrong in every which way it just it it makes very little sense to me um especially when it's immediate someone like you calls her out right on what it is she's saying being not true yeah so the thing with yellen with all these people it's very important to remember is they are political operators 
And sure, they'll stand in front of the cameras and say, oh, no, no, my job is finance. You know, the the goal of this agency is to do a certain thing. We focus on that. Mm-hmm. We don't focus on politics. That is a lie. Yeah. You know, that that's a lie. These people are all political operators. And so, you know, think about it. We're, we're now in, we're not going into an election year. We are in right. an election year. She wants to protect the White House. And so- the more people focus on the increase in the cost of living, the more people focus on inflation, the worse that's going to be for the reelection efforts, of the White House, the worse that's going to be for the people who are in power to try to keep them in power. So what they're trying to do right now is say, listen, you know, nothing happened, everything's fine, but even if this, something did happen, it's not really our fault. Like basically they went from saying, the thing that's happened isn't our fault, right? We've had inflation, but it's not our fault. It's not our spending. It's not our policies. It's really just been, you know, supply chain, which we couldn't control. They could have controlled that, but they didn't. Uh, You know, it's Vladimir Putin. We couldn't control that. They could have controlled that. They didn't, right? But they basically went from saying, there's a problem, but it's not our fault to saying, well, there's really no problem. Everything's fine. I mean, this is basically, Rob, what this is, it's public flailing, trying mm. to change the narrative yeah. as you know the the even though we're technically early in the primary season it does seem like the fields on both sides are very no narrowed right and and the path to a nomination as it is today for you know anyone not named Biden or Trump um is pretty hard president trump is going to be very hard to knock out of that slot i've seen a ton of rumors over the last week that um, that Biden is going to step aside. I, I think he didn't help himself last week when, you know, when an investigation came out and people said, okay, look, he broke the law, but we don't want to accuse him of anything because they basically said he's a senile old man who's going to say, I don't remember anything. And he's going to come off as sympathetic. And when people said, okay, wait a minute, we're, you know, we're a little concerned about, you saying you're too senile to defend your actions, but how are you president of the United States? He then came out to defend himself and then immediately mixed up the president of Mexico with the president of Egypt and those borders. Mm -hmm. And he didn't help himself on that. Um, So, you know, there are rumors because of that, that he's going to step aside. But if he doesn't, if he doesn't step aside, he will almost certainly be the democratic nominee. And so, you know, as as each party coalesces around their chosen person, whether people like those choices or not, this is the direction we're going. Um, You know, this is, this is where we are. And so we're kind of in the political narrative part of the drama here, right? you know, where they're just going to come out. They've literally gone from saying the problem is not our fault to, well, there's really no problem. Right. (laughs) You know? And so that's, you know, when you're saying it doesn't make sense, no, what she's doing makes sense. It's just, if you understand finance, you understand what she's doing and that it's dishonest. And again, she said the quiet part out loud. Like basically she's putting the blame for the situation on, on herself, on Congress and on the white house. Um, she's, you know, just they're, they're in a tough spot in terms of trying to convince people that the higher cost of living is not due to their policies. Right. Very interesting. Uh, lots to look forward to in 24. Yeah, wait, uh, let me just put yeah, one, other, one, one other key point on this is, you know, let's let's imagine uh, uh, in November, hypothetically, the Republicans have a clean sweep, right? So President Trump is back in office and we end up with, by we, I mean, the United States ends up with Republican control of Congress and the Senate. But if that happens, because I don't want people to think I'm just blaming the Democrats for this. If that happens, if there's a Republican sweep in November, you should expect continued inflation because the Republicans are big spenders as well. They're not mm-hmm. going to cut spending. And, you know, people love to call President Trump a far right extremist, but he was a huge spender. Yeah. He spent enormous amounts. And even when he had a Republican Congress and a Republican Senate, they didn't cut spending then. And right. and they won't if given the choice. So, you know, 
nobody should think that I am solely blaming the Democratic Party for inflation and massive spending. I, on this particular issue, I think they're worse than the Republicans. But do not think that, you know, if if the country gives control back to the Republican Party, that we're going to have a reduction in spending and go back to, you know, have some sort of deflation. It's not going to happen. Inflation and money printing will continue regardless of who's in power in Washington. Great points. Thanks for clearing that up, Gary. And one thing I should have mentioned, too, uh, I think I left out the title of this week's yeah. five things, uh, silly people saying silly things issue. So uh, we'll keep that keep that thread moving forward.